Thank you very much for coming to the Keio University. I'm very grateful. Uh, the, so, so this is a, so we are going to launch a, what is called Keio Center for Strategy. So we are going to do more research on international issues and strategic issues. So I, I would like to ask some questions. And uh, so I very much commend your leadership and uh, you saved uh, NATO from the uncertainties under the Trump administration, and also you are now keeping the alliance united in confronting Russia. So the first question is that uh, is about, uh, the, I would like to know about uh, sort of a hints and secrets and tips of keeping the alliance united. So the, what do you think is the most important in terms of building consensus among 30 different countries, of course, 30 different countries have different ideas and different locations, different interests. So what is the most the important, important thing? The most important thing is to focus on what uh, uh, unites us and not on the issues that uh, divides us. Um, and, uh, and when it comes to NATO, in one way, that's quite obvious, because what uh, unites us is that uh, we are stronger when we stand together. And the whole idea of NATO is that if one ally is attacked, that is regarded as an attack uh, on all allies, uh, one for all, all for one. Uh, and of course, there are differences. Uh, uh, there has always been differences between uh, NATO allies. Uh, we are uh, 30 allies from both sides of the Atlantic, um, with different uh, history, with different geography, with different uh, political parties in, uh, in, in, in charge. And then there has been differences uh, dating back to the Suez crisis in the 1950s, uh, uh, to the Iraq war uh, and, and many other things. Uh, <clears throat> but, but NATO has always prevailed uh, because uh, all allies realized that uh, by standing together we are safer. It is in, it is in the national security interest uh, to uh, stand together to protect each other. And that's even more so now, where we live in a more dangerous, more unpredictable world. Then it's even more important that we stand together. Uh, and that's exactly what we do in NATO. And, and what I have done is to focus on that. Uh, and, uh, and that has helped to keep the alliance together. And the alliance today is more united than ever before. Well, I think what we see is that uh, all allies realize the importance of NATO uh, mm. uh, even more strongly. Uh, because of the brutal war in Ukraine. Mm. It, had, it, it has demonstrated uh, how important it is that we have a strong NATO alliance. Um, as you know, uh, Ukraine is not a NATO ally, uh, uh, but it is extremely important for uh, all NATO allies to ensure that uh, something like what we now see is happening in Ukraine mm. uh, does not happen to any NATO ally. And that's exactly why we have NATO. That's the reason why uh, we have, uh, over the years, increased our military presence in especially mm -hmm. the eastern part of the lines, in the Baltic countries, in, in Poland, uh, to remove any room for misunderstanding, miscalculation in Moscow about our readiness or our uh, ability to protect and defend all allies. And this is, this is deterrence. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the purpose of that is not to provoke a conflict, but to prevent conflict, mm -hmm. preserve peace. Uh, and, 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 of course, the war in Ukraine demonstrates the importance of this uh, so clearly, so therefore the alliance is even more united. Mm -hmm. And you have been quite successful in deterring Russia in terms of defending NATO territory. Yes, also for, for more than 70 years, mm -hmm. uh, close to 75 years uh, 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 since 1949, mm -hmm. uh, NATO uh, has been the most successful mm -hmm. uh, alliance in history uh, because uh, we have been able to uh, provide credible deterrence uh, mm -hmm every day, first during the Cold War, mm -hmm. uh, but now uh, also against uh, uh, any potential adversary. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, we are preventing the war from uh, in, in Ukraine from escalating beyond Ukraine into NATO territory uh, by standing together the way we uh, do. You rightly emphasize that uh, Ukraine needs more weapons. And it's quite true. And, uh, but what we have seen over the past year is a sort of an incremental and uh, gradual increase of provision of weapons to Ukraine. So do you think that uh, NATO countries have been, should have been, should have done better and more quickly? And if that's the case, why countries haven't been quite rapid and fast in terms of <coughs> providing weapons to Ukraine? NATO allies 
are providing and have provided unprecedented level of support to Ukraine. And uh, President Putin made a big mistake uh, when he thought that uh, he could divide NATO allies and, and, and he totally underestimated um, the, the commitment of NATO allies uh, to uh, support Ukraine. With, uh, with economic sanctions against Russia, but also with uh, military support uh, to, to Ukraine. Then you're right that, of course, uh, uh, we are now providing different type, more advanced weapons uh, than we did in the beginning of the war. Um, the NATO support Ukraine has evolved as the war has evolved. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it was extremely important to, uh, for instance, provide uh, light, uh, uh, easy to operate uh, anti-tank weapons, uh, mm -hmm. like the javelins uh, yeah. and 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 end laws from from the United States and uh, and, uh, and and uh, and the United Kingdom and, and all the allies also provided uh, those weapons. Um, um, then uh, uh, artillery uh, became more and more important, yeah. and we focused a lot on on uh, advanced artillery. Uh, uh, systems and ammunition uh, uh, to artillery, and then later on, um, uh, air defense, including more advanced air defense systems, has been a top priority. And now the focus is, uh, 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 of course, to maintain support to those existing systems, but also to provide more armor, more mm -hmm. more uh, armored vehicles, yeah. infantry fighting vehicles, and also battle tanks. Yeah. And then there is a constant consultation among allies, and also, of course, with Ukraine, on, on uh, the type of support, uh, what kind of platforms we should provide. Uh, and of course that is important, but I think that uh, we also need to realize that this is not only a discussion about new platforms, mm -hmm. uh, uh, battle tanks or, or a new air defense system. It's also very much about ensuring that all the systems we have mm -hmm. already uh, uh, sent to Ukraine that they operate, uh, operate as they should, mm -hmm. meaning that they need ammunition, mm -hmm. enormous amounts of ammunition. Um, uh, we need uh, uh, maintenance, spare parts, uh, and, uh, and therefore, yes, uh, uh, we need to consult and discuss mm -hmm. uh, new platforms, but as important is also to ensure that all the platforms which are already there mm -hmm. have the sufficient mm -hmm. uh, enablers uh, support to operate as they should. Mm -hmm. And you emphasize that uh, Mr. Putin underestimated <coughs> the strength of the alliance. Why do you think he underestimated that? He didn't know about NATO, he should have learned more about NATO, or what, what was the cause? Also, I'm, I'm careful speculating, <laughs> but it's obvious that he underestimated the Ukrainians, their mm -hmm. strength, their courage, their commitment of the Ukrainian armed forces, the Ukrainian people, political leadership, and he also totally underestimated the, the unity of NATO, NATO allies and partners to provide support to uh, Ukraine. Uh, I would be, so I, uh, that, that's the fact, because we all know that, that the plan was to take uh, 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 control over Kiev, uh, Ukraine, within days, and, and now uh, he has uh, been in this brutal war of aggression mm -hmm. for almost a year. Um, but of course, I think we need to realize that in authoritarian systems, in authoritarian regimes, uh, the truth is the first victim, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and criticism, and... Uh, and people who are questioning uh, decisions uh, by leaders, uh, they, 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 they are very often in a position where they are not able to do that. Uh, so one of the enormous strength, uh, strength uh, the advantages we have being democracies, open and free societies, is that, of course, democracies, we make mistakes, uh, uh, but we are also very good at um, uh, correcting mistakes mm -hmm. because we have open, free uh, uh, debates uh, and discussions, uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what they don't mm -hmm. have a, in uh, Russia and in authoritarian systems. Mm, that's great. The, let me ask a question about the relationship between the research and the think tank community and the policy community. So the, from a policy perspective and from a political leadership perspective, what do you expect the most from the think tank and research community? So first of all, I think it's a very important part of democratic, open, free societies uh, to have a free and independent press, but also to have a free and uh, independent academia, mm. uh, to have free and independent uh, academic institutions like uh, the Keio University and other institutions, uh, because uh, it helps us to have a, a more honest uh, uh, understanding uh, of uh, the world we live in. Uh, it helps us to move forward uh, 
um, in science, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in scientific work, uh, and also uh, open discussions about our societies and mm -hmm. decisions that the policy community or politicians are making. Uh, so I think the most important thing for academic institutions is to continue to seek the truth mm -hmm. and, and to have free, open minds and uh, debates. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, finally, the, I would like to ask your message to students, particularly on why they need to study international relations, international security, and peace and security issues. International relations matters more and more for all of us in our daily life because we live in a global economy, uh, security is global, and therefore <clears throat> the big international questions are not only important for those people who are traveling around the world mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and are part of a kind of global uh, uh, community, uh, but, but it matters for everyone in, 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 in our local lives, uh, in the lives we live in our local communities. Uh, peace prosperity <clears throat> is so interconnected throughout the world. Uh, so therefore, international politics um, is, uh, is important to understand and we need students, we need uh, uh, academic understanding of international relations to be able to make the right decisions also in the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.